Hi everyone. I came across this article while doing more research on the dangers of pulsating frequencies. Why am I doing more research on that? Because I believe that these frequencies may be the most dangerous thing that we face because they can use these frequencies to mind control segments of the population and I do believe that they are using these frequencies to do just that but also the pulsating frequencies are uh, affecting our brains, our physical health, our mental uh, stability, our mental, our, cogn our cognitive abilities, our emotions. But when you have when you have a weapon that you can use and this weapon is invisible and you can use it in such a way that nobody would even realize that they are being targeted whether they're targeted individually or targeted collectively that weapon altering their thoughts their perception warping their reality then if that's the case how could we possibly get through to those who were targeted about what we really do face how do we get through to them about the other dangers that we face we can't so that's why I've always said that these frequencies I do believe are the most dangerous thing that we face and the pulsating frequencies are extremely dangerous but this article published in Military Review 1980 New Mental Battlefield Psychotronics so I've taken some excerpts which are very very important and remember this was back in 1980 we're now 2018 but John Alexander, who wrote this article, who uh, he's a retired United States Army colonel, and he served under Major General Albert Stubblebine. And if you don't know who Major General Albert Stubblebine is, then just put that name in the YouTube search bar, and you will see an awful lot of videos. He's now dead, but he came out and said, no plane hit the Pentagon. Okay. But, reportedly, Alexander was one of Stubblebine's closest colleagues. A bit of Alexander's resume. He was, for several years, program manager for non-lethal defense at Los Alamos National Laboratory. He conducted non-lethal warfare briefings at the highest level to the President, National Security Council, director of the CIA, senior Department of Defense officials. So, this article that he wrote from Military Review back in 1980, it is written by someone who knows what he's talking about. The complexity of the battlefield is constantly increasing. Introduction of new and sophisticated technology requires commanders to be fully aware of the nature of a potential threat as well as countermeasures and counter countermeasures in addition to more widely known technological advances a new battlefield dimension that may defy our generally perceived concepts of time and space looms on the horizon this field is sometimes called psychotronics or bioenergetics psychotronics may be described as the interaction of mind and matter. While the concepts may stretch the imagination of many readers, research in this area has been underway for years and the possibility for employment as weaponry has been explored. To be more specific, there are weapon systems that operate on the power of the mind and whose lethal capacity has already been demonstrated. 1980. Mind-altering techniques designed to impact on an opponent are well advanced. The procedures employed include manipulation of human behavior. 
through use of psychological weapons affecting sight, sound, smell, temperature, electromagnetic energy, or sensory deprivation. The ability to heal or cause disease can be transmitted over distance, thus inducing illness or death for no apparent cause. So for those who leave comments saying they would never do this to us, you, know, you claim they're subjecting us in dangerous frequencies 24-7? Well, they're in those dangerous frequencies. No. Understand that what we are subjected to is not what these evil uh, psychopathic nut jobs are subjected to. They use the frequencies to heal. They use the frequencies to benefit their health while turning up the frequencies for us to get destroyed. And yeah, they walk around on Earth and they too are subjected to the dangers, but they're using the frequencies to keep themselves healthy. The existence of energy emanations from the body has been repeatedly demonstrated through radiation field photography known as the Kerr Curlian effect. Mm. This phenomenon, which has been widely replicated in the West, reflects changes in emotional condition. Despite common use of acupuncture in the East for thousands of years, Western medicine is only now accepting the premise that the human body can be treated for physical ailments through adjustments in their uh, chi, in their chi, in their energy, the minute electromagnetic life force that flows through us. It has been determined that the functions of the autonomic nervous system previously thought to operate independently of the conscious mind can be controlled. This indicates that we can internally direct are physiological systems that produce anxiety and stress. Now I think most people understand that yeah we have a brain power that we've only accessed maybe a very 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 small percentage of that power. It's always been understood that we access maybe 10 percent. Now I believe that that 10% has been so disrupted by the use of this weapon, these frequencies, microwave frequencies pulsating at us from all of our gadgets and TVs and computer screens and cell phone towers and cell phones and Gwen towers, that unfortunately may be preventing a lot of us to access fully that 10%. But these frequencies, my God, you know, if life could have been something so incredible, it could have been so unbelievable if, if we were able to really access far more of our brain. But you know what? There are so many. And this is not just the time of this Wi-Fi that we're living in, but parents and teachers and friends and family. It's like everybody wants to stay at a very low level and never do any work on themselves to grow. So when you're in the midst of all of that, there are so many people who keep you down. They shame you, you know, for wanting to grow and learn more about yourself and do all of that kind of work. Well, but can you imagine what life would have been? 
had we had a healthy population that retained their curiosity and didn't stop growing by the time they became 18 or 21 and instead just like 24 7 everything that mattered was just getting more money bigger house material gain anyway it's sad to me it's really sad to me what has happened psychotronic weapons able to induce illness or death at little or no risk to the operator. Psychotronic weapon would be silent, difficult to detect, and would, requ would require only a human operator as a power source. Yep, flick that switch and increase those frequencies. Extremely low frequency emissions possess psychoactive characteristics. My videos, satellites, showing you the use of the extremely low frequencies. Now they're using them far more frequently. They possess psychoactive characteristics. These transmissions can be used to induce depression or irritability in a target population. The application of large scale, extremely low frequencies, the large scale ELF behavior modification could have horrendous impact. And we're living that horrendous impact. Mind to mind thought induction techniques capability that could allow the direct transfer of thought via tele telepathy from one mind or group of minds to a selected target audience. The unique factor is that the recipient will not be aware that thoughts have been implanted from an external source. He or she will believe the thoughts are original. So, I just wanted to share that with you. There's an awful lot more in this article and it's a good resource because the end notes are just more papers, studies that have been conducted. This is happening guys. They are absolutely using these frequencies as a weapon against us. So many are talking about their loss of memory and so many, whether comments or people that I've spoken to or neighbors, they're talking about difficulties they're experiencing at ages they should not be experiencing this. Many having difficulty thinking, brain fog, feeling things, irritability, depression, dread, lack of hope, anger, and they don't, they can't really point to any, anything that is going on in terms of, you know, the life circumstances that bring about those feelings naturally. The cognitive difficulties that I've been reading many of you sharing. I have been having, that's why I started doing this research again. I am having, as I've said, difficulty talking, difficulty concentrating, difficulty focusing, and functioning. And it's getting worse. I say that only to emphasize how dangerous is this time we are living. We are living in a time of war. And many more 
are going down. And I still get the sense that an awful lot of people, even with the knowledge that they have of what we are living and what we face, the dangers, they still have this normalcy bias. I don't think anybody should be operating normally today. Not with what we are confronting. I'll link below to this article.